I don't agree with a lot of things that Republicans do. Maybe we do need a ban TikTok. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 24 of the Coconut Curry podcast. On this episode, we are going to be discussing NBA big games that recently happened while going over the standings. We're going to talk about the Heat and Pelicans, that fight that yes, we all saw on TV. That was ridiculous. That was Friday night. Um, we're going to talk about what the Sixers should do because there's been a lot of debate um, about what the Sixers should do the rest Sell of the, the season. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about what NBA team has the most pressure heading into the final games in the playoffs. And then, if there's time, we're going to talk about Russell Wilson, our favorite NFL quarterback. We love him. But before we do that, if you're new around here, I'm Justin, Raj Peter, on the mics as well. We have, we're from the University of Pittsburgh um, on all platforms, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. If you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe. It helps us out a lot on our road to 100 subscribers. As we do with every episode, we're going to start by reacting to comments, which there's a lot of hate yeah, comments to go over. Justin, I'm not going to lie. Everybody hates you. Yeah, Everyone hates you. called a body. Yeah. Well, I think it's all these 40-year-olds who <laughs> don't have any money and think that the basketball players are the most entitled people in the world. Yep. Um, so we're going to get right into it. This is my favorite comment. We are going to like print it and tape it onto Raj's computer um, if you're watching on video, but I forgot it in my, in my room. But um, this quote reads, this shit right here is why there should be an application process to have a podcast. We can't let bozos like this have bozo takes and not regulate that shit. <laughs> That's the quote. And whoever wrote this... That's an all-time take. That is all time. That that is up there with awesome. Max Kellerman. Um, I, I want, want Iguodala. Iguodala. Yeah, that's we, up there we, with Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown. <laughs> Nick Wright. Um, LeBron had to go back in time to pass Jordan yeah. the first. I mean, that is that is a perfect all take. time. I I love that. Yeah, I don't know how you would like regulate the application, the podcast application. But that is process. hilarious. I don't know who would review yeah. the, what type of governing body would oversee podcasts. <laughs> the but, Department of Podcasting. Yeah, I'm here for it though. I'm like, so here if for the it. US That's so funny. Wants to start, I'll, I'll file an application according to you. It might yes. not go so well, but uh, I'm, I'm ready so to see funny. it out. Oh my god, I love it. Um, great take. Um, the next one is not true. All players, rarely players, play 82 games anymore. Um, this is in response to me saying that players play 82 games really competitively throughout the year. No, I wonder why players don't play 82 games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everything I said in the clip was the reason players don't like what the game's harder than it used exactly. to be. Players are more sore. There's more cutting and more aggressive movement. That's all they, they don't play 82 games because all of, of all of that. So yeah. when people are like, oh, well, I don't play 82 games anymore. That that's exactly why, yeah. um, that was crazy. Um, my favorite and what I refer, one of my favorites is nah, if you get paid millions, you need to play as hard as you can. They should be smart and spend money on taking care of their bodies for what they're getting paid for. That's what they're doing. That's what they're like. Uh, That's the point. Uh, almost every NBA player spends a lot of money on their body. And I mean, there's not like LeBron James type investments from every single player, but they all care a lot and they get paid millions because you watch them. Yeah. Um, they, that's just how like business works is like. If the league's making billions, obviously the workers need to be then making a, a lot of money as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's kind of just how that works. Economics. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> and yeah, and just the idea, and this is really prevalent in the comments about the millions of dollars that get paid. Yeah, the idea that you cannot complain about, you should not be able to complain about work because you make a lot of money is like bogus. And also, it's like it's not like they're sitting there doing nothing. No. Like they're doing like it's like one of the most physically strenuous things. And they're ever. under a ton of like media scrutiny. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it, it would be like like because the whole thing, it's like it's such a big difference because like you're the angle that like you're coming across as is like, oh, well, if I were to be making millions at my job, I wouldn't complain. Yeah. No, duh. Because you work at accounting. Yeah. Like that's not the same thing as like going to TD bank. Yeah. You work at TD bank. Like it's not the same thing as going out in front of millions of people having like everybody in your dms and everything saying you're a horrible player and like the second you make one mistake it's not like oh well if i file this like paperwork a little bit wrong and need to redo it oh i can just redo it and and this is with the caveat that these players get traded you're not if you're working at td bank you don't get traded to sofi bank overnight <laughs> and suddenly you got to move halfway across the country uh, dude it, it will it would be like going it's like if you're yeah it's like if you're on <laughs> if you're in like it's let's say you're working at pnc and yeah. then all of a sudden it's like yeah you're getting traded to a subway in minnesota by the way yeah bye <laughs> you're getting nothing like sorry this is a downgrade but you don't have a choice yeah like, but these we, players, you don't care yeah obviously no i no one should feel bad for these players in terms of 
like oh they have they have it so hard yes but the idea that they can't have their own like there's a reason they have a players association yeah, is because like, they, they want people to advocate for them because like obviously if we're on a scale of things we're not saying that being an nba player is the hardest job in the world nor am i saying i feel sorry for them but like they have a, to play the but they game. Can't, like they're allowed to be like yeah this is kind of hard yep at, like on a platform talking about the nba as an nba player like yeah. no doubt the nba is hard hot take. It <laughs> yeah. is hard to be a professional athlete yeah. it's a very lucrative uh lucrative job to have yeah. but it, it comes with its disadvantages so exactly. this idea that you just can get paid millions of dollars and it shouldn't matter is nothing and then the last one is you got to give some effort you know how much these freaking tickets cost to go to the all-star game that's kind of valid kind that's, of except yeah. for the fact that the all-star game has been horrible since before kobe died and it was good the year to kobe died and then afterwards it came back to so like <laughs> that's just I, buyers beware at that I, point exactly you know like, what you're gonna go to like, i don't feel bad for the people who buy tickets to go to the all-star game because you knew the game was going to be bad it's yeah. not like, like we said this in the, the episode it's not like you don't know the game's going to be bad yeah like you, every year we know the game's going to be yeah. bad it's like the dunk contest like mm -hmm. you see you can see the list of people who signed up like jacob Toppin, yeah i mean Jalen Jalen yeah. brown with one hand <laughs> And Mac McClung, like, it's not like you were going to get a showstopper yeah. over there. Well, because and at the end of the day, like, because the NBA is a business, the only way they're going to actually make a change is if they start losing money. So here's a crazy idea. Stop oh. buying tickets to the All-Star game, and maybe they'll figure something out. Also, whoever commented this, you were acting like people were flying into Indianapolis. <laughs> ain't nobody flying into Indianapolis for this game. Yeah. Well, it's only, and also, it's, it's, it's very different than like an actual basketball game yeah. where like you're going to, it's the All-Star game. It it's a whole, it's a whole entire event, and you have yes. tickets for the whole, like, yeah. everything. So, yeah, yeah those, weren't, those weren't valid. Um, overall, our take in our clip that we posted was to explain why basketball players don't try in the all-star game. Not that we feel sorry for them that they have, <laughs> they have it so hard or that they can't handle it or that we like, I still think they should play hard in the all-star game, but they don't. Yeah. And there's a reason why. And the reason why is because they are tired. So yeah. um, someone also said, it sounds like I'm saying that they should bring back hand checking. Uh, absolutely, they should bring back hand checking. Yes. yes. So bring back the '80s. I want people fist fighting and not getting ejected. <laughs> I need that it would in be basketball. So fun. Street I ball rules it. only. Yes, street. Yeah, <laughs> no blood, no foul. You call your own fouls. You say check ball. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Also, please leave it. Uh, continue leaving comments. They're very funny, and mm. we love engaging with yeah, them. Yeah. This it, we were in a dry spell for a little bit, and this like yeah. Well, people. I turned off notifications on on the Instagram account because it was like distracting every time it like came through. Yeah. Um, because we're so popular. I know. And right? um, when I just checked one day, I was like, oh wow, people really don't like this. <laughs> yeah. So uh, please continue to leave comments. Start beef in the comment sections. Just start saying stuff. It's yeah, very fun. Start fighting each other. Just fight each send, other. Send yeah. Threats. Just get mad. Mm -hmm. No, don't send Keep, threats. When, don't, no I never said I. We would. as the Coconut Curry Podcast do not condone everything that is said by the members of said <laughs> Coconut Curry Podcast. <laughs> particularly one. <laughs> particularly one of them. <laughs> one person, particularly. I want to see some action on board. <laughs> okay, Raj. All right. <laughs> All right. That was reacting to comments. Great segment as always. But now moving into an even better segment. Disgruntled moment of the week. The best time of the week of the podcast. Disgruntled meaning angry or dissatisfied. We give go over moments in our life and sports that we mm. think qualify as angry or dissatisfied. Raj, do you want to start with us? Start us off. Yeah, I was at the casino. <laughs> oh, God. So you know where this is going to go. <laughs> Buddy, you only went, we're down like, you broke even. I know I broke even, but the issue here is I got absolutely... I didn't, but... Yeah, yeah. That was, that's another thing we'll get into. But I get absolutely screwed on the blackjack table. Dealer showing a two. I got pocket sevens. So obviously, I'm going to split. <laughs> First hand, I get 16. I'm like, cool, I'm going to stay. Second hand, I get 11. So I double down. And then I get a six on that. Dealer flips, 12. Flips a seven, 19. I lose both hands. <laughs> it was, and then you walked away. And then I walked away. Which, no, honestly, I, good for you. I put one more hand to make my, my $10 that I was about okay. to lose. So I broke even there. Well, I'm glad that you decided to walk away from the table. I didn't want to. I know you don't. That was, that was very proud of you. <sighs> We're very proud, Raj. And then I lost $10 at Wheel of Fortune slots. <laughs> oh and then God. I made it back by putting a dollar on some random penny slot. Anyways, I hate blackjack. <laughs> Are you going to stop playing it? No. Yeah. Obviously not. Oh. All right. My disgruntled moment of the week is uh, we were all out at dinner um, for Peter's birthday. And 
me and Andres, our friend formerly on the podcast, yes. we were splitting three churros with some chocolate ice cream. Oh. And I at one point decided to try to pick up the churro with like the knife and the spoon. And I dropped it on the floor. But before it hit the floor, it got all over Andres's jeans and my flannel. Do you want so, to explain why you, for some ungodly reason, were trying to grab a churro with a knife and a fork? No or thought. Or a spoon, sorry. There was no thought. And, and the margarita. <laughs> <laughs> but there was no thought going through, through at that point. And I, instead of picking up the churro with my fingers and just taking the half that you I You touched it, and then splitting yeah, it between the two I, of you. You need to cut it in half. I could have just picked it up. The one side you decided to try to make mexican chopsticks is what yeah you did. and i chose the spoon of all <laughs> all utensils i could have used a fork and a knife a little bit surely more flag, yeah like speared it yeah sure there was a could, lot of different could have options on anything I, andres probably wouldn't have cared if i just like picked it up with both hands and like ripped it in half and, after all we've been through that's probably yeah. like like one on the very low end of, but I, I but i chose a spoon and, and a knife and it hit the floor and got <laughs> chocolate after ice cream. getting all over about after <laughs> And I just looked at it on the floor. It was such a good churro. And I was just like, man, I really dropped the ball on this one. <laughs> that was rough. That was very, very but yeah, rough. yeah, that was my disgruntled moment. But I we... just don't know how I didn't see this. I was sitting next I to know. you. I know. I don't no, know how. No one noticed it. And I, was <laughs> like very gra- I was grateful no one noticed you it. You could have taken this to the grave, dude. <laughs> I know I'm alive. But it's too funny. Not the to people care. need to know. What's funny is Andres never brought it up either the rest <laughs> of the night. And I was, I thought it was so funny. He was trying to cover for you. <laughs> I know. I was like, this is the all time like classic L. Like, oh, you could have like, I could have been made a brutal. fool. So Jesus. I just made myself a fool on the podcast. Yeah. But I came back and was like trying to rub out the chocolate ice cream. You were trying to do what? What? You want to do that again for me on camera? Look directly into the camera and do exactly what you were doing real quick. Lick your lips too. No. Okay. No. Just wanted to make sure. Um. But yeah, that was my disgruntled moment of the week. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Uh. Well, my disgruntled moment of the week uh is sports clips. No, I didn't get absolutely bodied at sports clips. They did not cut my hair. Uh. Because I couldn't get in to sports clips. You would think. You know. Surely on a random Wednesday that there wouldn't be that long there of a wait. There can't be that much going on. There can't be that long of a wait because, you know, it's Wednesday, it's rainy. There's no, There can't be too many people there. The wait was three hours long. <laughs> three hours. Who is getting their hair cut on Wednesdays? I know I am. Ignore that. Okay? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I don't want intelligence. Just... I, why? Why are? Why is everybody Shouldn't going people to be in class? That's what I thought. I was like, <laughs> well, surely. Do I go to class? Okay, well, shut up, Ross. So now right think here. about how many okay, other people we're also don't go to class. Seniors. Yeah, that's like, true. That's like, well, surely. I've, I've been doing this since, never mind. Okay, stop. Yeah. Grenade yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's not crazy. But, um, so it's just so frustrating because I just need a haircut. And there's no, like, there's some barber shops, but I don't have a car. So I can't really, like, go there. I could try to get on a bus to get to these places. It's not exactly super convenient. But, oh, don't worry. I could either go to Sports Clips or Super Clips. And I really <laughs> don't trust Super Clips. No. I've already got somebody at Sports Clips that actually does a good job. But the issue is that my hair is kind of getting long at this point. It is, for those that, that are on audio, I apologize. You can't see. But at this point, for those that are watching. It's if you are watching, it's a joy. It's a joy. It's pretty long at this point. I'm going like full you look on. Like Zuko. I do look like early. Like, oh, no. I guess that would be late Zuko. Yeah. Can you wear like eyeliner and eyeshadow and shit now? Because tonight will be the night. No- yeah, no. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's getting really long, and the issue is that uh, in about what? a week and two days, a week and two days, uh, we're going to be going to Nashville. So I kind of need decent hair for that, considering my mom is going to beat my ass if I don't take just pictures. wear a cowboy hat um, I, and shorts, you know, and a cut off flannel. Speaking of, I probably shouldn't wear a cowboy hat because somebody really wouldn't want me to wear a cowboy hat and boots. Um, so <laughs> the entire time during the trip, and I would definitely be bullied for that. Um, girls ruin all the fun. No <laughs> cut off flannels, no cowboy hats, no ripped jorts. What, is, what, what, all what these are we rules? supposed to do? What, how do we have fun? God, <laughs> I guess no. we have to drink. <laughs> <laughs> drink and gamble. Drink, gamble. <laughs> that's, the, that's the fun we'll have. There we yep. go. All right. And then speaking of. Speaking of. We do oh, have de- Jamie's debut on the podcast. Yes. Oh, my God. Disgruntled moment of yes. the week. Yes. All right. Um, so first, to defend the girls on the pod. Oh, you gotta take, gotta take the mic. Gotta take the mic. Oh, I have to sit down and take the mic. Okay. Say hi to the pod. Hi, pod. You've been on um, more episodes this year than Jacob and Andres combined. Yeah. Well, I've been told I have a guest appearance since like I started dating Peter, and that's been like what two years. You're cashing my it first in. Time. Cash we were we were lying. Yeah. You're on the pod before Kenzie. I, I was lying. 
I'm, I'm saying I was lying about you coming on the pod. I didn't yeah. think this was actually happening. <laughs> well, you're like you're like leaning away from her, like you're gonna get hit or something. I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but to defend the girls on the trip, we only set rules for those of us who would want to actually like come home with us one night. So if you have no interest in me or Kenzie. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> you heard this, Colin, Andrew, Jacob, and no, Andre says. <laughs> Why are we name dropping? <laughs> Why are we not name dropping? Why are we not? Yeah. You want to say something? You're just upset that you didn't get name dropped. <laughs> no, I got implied in one of those. Anyways, moving on. Oh, my disgruntled moment. Yeah, you're disgruntled. Go for it. Yes, it's lovely. Um, so for those of you who don't know on the pod, I work at a restaurant. And I had a lovely customer come in last <laughs> night while I was... So yes, I have this customer come in, and we're pretty busy. And he um, orders a double egg sandwich, and he wants extra bacon on it. That means four slices of bacon. As you should. Yeah. Yum. What? Yum. Yum, I know. So I'm making a sandwich for him. I'm cooking that night. I also took his order, because I I was multitasking. Mm -hmm. Um, He's watching me make his order, and then he yells, Excuse me, I want double bacon. So at that point, I assume that means he wants a double bacon sandwich, which doesn't have egg on it. Mm -hmm. So I say, oh, so you don't want the egg? He said, yes. Now, this man has come in before, and he's caused me a lot of issues in the past. I didn't realize it was him, but I just didn't want to cause an issue because it was 6 o'clock. My shift went until midnight. <laughs> yeah, not, not worth the effort. No. And so I make the double bacon sandwich. I package it, set it aside for one of the servers to give to him. They give it to him. He throws it at the cash register. <laughs> And demands a refund. <laughs> and we're all confused. Um, because, you know, he had already corrected his order once while watching me make is he, it. Is he eating in the restaurant? No, it's to go. Okay, to go. Oh, yes. Lord. And he's demanding a refund. And, you know, me being the manager, I go mm. over and I'm trying to figure out what the heck's going on. He then calls me a mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, He's yelling also. Yeah. I start yelling and tell him to leave. And he says, I want a refund. So I snatched his food away from him and said that you're not getting food. Gave him his refund. And he kept saying that I'm a dumb can't use my brain because he ordered a double egg sandwich. It's right there and I don't have a brain. And then I said, don't call me a get out. Mm -hmm. He then said, I'm always polite to everybody here. Bitch. I'm being nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I said, you called me multiple times in this location. Now get out and so, do not come back. So pleasant. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and then he says, I wonder why I call you no one else. Now, for reference, he's called Kenzie a I think. Kenzie has yelled at him for calling me a the other time he was there. <laughs> Wait, who's this? It's, you probably have never been there because you, you never come you never come into there's, a There's a reason. I don't go to <laughs> anymore. Yeah. I don't like uh, Yeah. Ah. So, this dude has caused me a lot of issues and he just hates me. And this was literally only two hours into my eight-hour shift. So, <laughs> then I am, like, like, sobbing because I don't do confrontation. And this is a grown man harassing me and threatening me in my workplace and i was the only one in charge need well jamie thanks for joining us for disgruntled moment of the week Love kenzie's me. gonna be jealous oh i know she's gonna be so well, mad i'm gonna go text honest. her right now yeah you should go text her right now yeah. i almost told her i was doing this but i figured she could be surprised oh, oh she will boy. be surprised yeah well, and then her disgruntled of the, of the moment of the week next week is gonna be not being invited <laughs> yeah all but she works every wednesday we record tuesdays well, yeah, we, we record we tuesdays record, wait but that's fake that means i won't be invited because i work well, because we'll be we'll so you're flip, picking Kenzie yeah. over me right now. No, stop! Don't do this! <laughs> don't don't do this! Raj, Raj said it, not us. I didn't say anything. What? <laughs> no, Raj is picking Kenzie. I thought only girlfriends were allowed to be on the pod. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Then if Kenzie's on it next week, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That's well, folks, that was definitely the longest disgruntled <laughs> moment of the week we've ever oh, had. Boy. But, uh, but all but all good fun. Uh, ah. As you said, our favorite segment. <laughs> um, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just talk about food, dude. This, this I, podcast I, I, hearing, really got yeah, off the rails. Hearing, uh, hearing like double egg bacon, all this. I you want to know what I'm craving right now? Bacon? No. A New Jersey breakfast sandwich, mm. like a, just a Taylor ham, egg yep. and cheese. I'd, I'd go crazy. Shout out Jersey. <sighs> Shout out Jersey. I miss those bagels. All right, all right. It's back to sports. It's sports. Now. <laughs> We're not I, getting that, to there this. was there was margaritas, Nashville. Nash Haircuts. I see lights. There's a lot there. Uh, so people getting cursed out at the workplace. Yeah, if any of my family's listening, I know that's like your favorite stuff, the life stuff. So there you go. That's a lot of it right there. There we go. Um, 13 minutes of it, actually. 14. 
Um, anyway, moving on to NBA stories, lines, and standing. So, of course, we're not going to walk through every NBA game that happened in the last eight days before we recorded because that's a lot of games. Pistons so we're not got robbed <laughs> against the, the Knicks. Pistons, the Pistons get it robbed. We'll get I, into that. I love my Knicks. I love that they won. They got robbed. <laughs> um, but I wanted to start with the Max Struess half court game winner that, that happened was nuts. Last night. Oh my god! Because um, not only was just the shot nuts, the play before it was nuts. The way that yeah. um, the Mavericks got the, what they thought would be the game winner was. Luca doing a no look backdoor cut bounce pass to whoever was underneath who gets a physical contact like probably should have gotten yeah. an and one takes the lead Max Drews chucks it from half court no, not in. from half court from three quarters yeah, three he quarters was on court. his own three point line it was yeah it was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and the Cavs win the game right but what's kind of go like, it's just like oh quick okay the cool it's a regular season Cavs win the game cool this is massive for the standings and this is likely to be a situation that at the end of the year we go Oh, if the Mavericks have just gotten that game, they would like not be in the play-in game. Or if the Cavs have got had lost that game, they would be the fourth seed or something like that. So, mm-hmm. kind of going through the standings a little bit. The Cavs right now sit one game above the Bucks. Had they lost last night, which they were pretty much going to lose, they would be half a game above the Bucks. Yeah, and they're only four games back of like a team like the Knicks, where maybe that comes into play late season if the Cavs kind of fall off a little bit, right? The Mavericks, on the other hand, are in the eighth spot for the playing game. Yeah. They would have been tied with the Kings for the seven spot and half a game back from the Suns at six. They're at, like the Mavs are two and a half games above the Lakers and the Warriors, half a game behind the Kings. This one game, yeah. I promise you, is going to matter at the end it's for be one huge. team or the other. Yeah. And it's because Max Struess cashed in not a three just point game winner, a three quarters court. court heave yeah for the game and it's just like it's super rad to think about these small moments that are gonna like you're gonna look back at the season and be like damn if he doesn't make that then what happens what's the butterfly yeah, effect I mean, from like, it let's say a situation happens where the mavs are in the play-in game and they end up being the eight seed mm-hmm. versus they got they get the sixth seed that could be the difference between them between them playing the Nuggets and the Timberwolves. What about they beat the Timberwolves in the first round yeah. and go, wow, imagine if the Mavericks didn't upset the one seed yep. because they ended up getting the sixth seed because all because Max Struess hit that three. Yeah. Like you can just go like this will be the I think this will be a moment where I look back and go, that one game mattered a lot. Yeah. Maybe it won't, maybe it will, but just a super cool, like big standings game. And I know people think there's a lot of games left in the regular season. There, there's really not. Um and then the stat line too, five for five from three. Yeah. 15 like points he on a heater gave, gave, yeah. gave the ball to the right guy yeah um because the timberwolves for example have played 58 games that means they have um 14 left where was this no, version tw- of max Drews on the heat 40 24 left which 24 left is not a lot of games um where was this version of max Drews? max Drews has been pretty bad since he's been on the Cavs, i think no, um not. he just played really good last night um gave the ball to the guy in the right moment um but of course the celtics still running away with the first seed yeah, in, in the east they're seven and a half heat games and up <laughs> We'll get to the heat. Um, I think that's really big for the Celtics. Just they have to, they really yeah. have the flexibility. They've won nine straight games since the last time we recorded. They were still up in the East by big, but now with 24 games left, nearly impossible for them to lose. It's just so much flexibility to mm-hmm. kind of like rest your players and yeah, um, and get away with it. So that, that's really good. They're the prohibited favorites in the Eastern Conference. I think yep. everyone agrees. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Bucks. We've been talking about the Bucks a lot and Doc Rivers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. They've strung together a nice three game stretch here. Um, and now they're only half a game out of that two seed. And it's funny that we talk about the Bucks and all the issues and the head coaching firings, but they're one game out of being the two seed in the East. They're yeah, because the whole thing is is like as much as <laughs> as much adversity, as much uh just like a random crowd that's happening to this team, not playing up to potential and everything. They're still really, really good. <laughs> Could I give a comp almost? This almost feels a little bit like the Eagles this year, where like their standing was still great throughout. Most oh, of the season. oh, yeah, yeah. They just don't feel like they're that but, good. Yeah, yeah. You don't feel like they're that good, and there's yeah. all these like this yeah, yeah, yeah. like commotion happening behind the scenes. Now maybe the Bucks fizzle out in the playoffs, like the Sixers do, or maybe they kind of turn. I mean, not Sixers, the Eagles. Eagles. But don't the, worry, the Sixers same are going to fizzle out. <laughs> same too. thing. The Eagles were a ten and one football team, and we yeah. were all like, they they're terrible, like all these issues, mm-hmm. and that's been the conversation about the Bucks about how bad things have been. Dame doesn't look good. Doc mm-hmm. Rivers bad. Adrian Griffin firing everything like that and they're in the three seed a half a game away from the cell from the Cavs, and they're not going to get the one seed so yeah. like they're in they're in good shape here and and playing well right now on a three game winning streak um of course they haven't played some great teams recently that being the pull up their schedule here sixers somewhere yeah, else. they played the sixers i know they beat them because the sixers don't they're not good right now 
Um, then they beat the Timberwolves, which is a good win, and then lost to the Grizzlies. That's a bad mm-hmm. loss. And then lost to the Heat. So I guess they... Wait, where? Oh, and they beat the Hornets. Yeah, whoop de doo. Um, but yeah, they're they're gonna they're stringing a few games together, which is, is which is good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I really wanted to talk about was the Miami Heat are catching fire right now. That was a pun, but um, <laughs> sorry, the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but w- winning five straight games admits the um the fight. Did I just skip over the fight, or did I put that on another side? Oh, I saw, okay. Never mind. I didn't skip over the fight. Um. Also, side note, Raj, can, for the love of God, can you get one of the sniper monkeys that can slow down the, the big balloons? Thank you. I'm working on it. I'll have that time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, the heat catching fire a little yeah. bit. Um, now, currently, the five seed, a game and a half back of the Knicks. How did they do this? I, I don't. How do they keep. They do every, this every. every they do. Year. Like, and this year's actually more dramatic, I would say, because like, they were like out of the playoffs. They were the eighth seed like last year, seven seed years before. And now, like, they're kind of creeping up to be the four seed. Like, are they going to have a home home playoff series to start? Like, that's ridiculous. Like, every year, every single year, we say the Heat don't have good players. They don't play. They're not playing well in the regular season. And then right when they need to be good, they just turn it on, go to the playoffs, and make, like, the finals or something. It's the yeah. dumbest thing every year. It's because yeah. Jimmy Butler sells his soul to some new trend Heat, every year. Yes, and then, yeah. Oh, my God. Did you see he's on the new Fall Out Boy music video? Yes, I did. I didn't see that. It's really funny. <laughs> it's insane. It's, it's so Jimmy. funny. Yeah, but I think for the Heat, this is a, a really good, perfect timing. I think for them not to, I'll talk about the Heat a little bit later too. Um, but constantly kind of finding themselves in that play in situations not great. You have a little little margin for error, and how to get yourself potentially a home playoff series mm-hmm. to start would be good, especially if you're in that four seed and you know you want to see the Celtics in the second round. Yeah, um, would be really good. So shout out to the Heat again. Five straight wins. One of those wins was without Jimmy Butler. Yeah, that um, was huge. That was a huge game against the King, and so. We'll see if they can keep it rolling. I forgot Obviously, the Kings were the NBA. <laughs> they benefited a lot from the Sixers and the Knicks really kind of falling off, yeah. mostly due to injuries. But my glorious King again, need to come back. Staying, staying, <laughs> being available is a thing. So. Well, yeah, because that's the whole thing is, is like if they were to get hot at a time, now it's the perfect yeah. opportunity. They're just taking that opportunity exactly. and running with it. That was the next point I have, just the Sixers and Knicks. Um, it's really hard to evaluate them because of their players missing. Of course, um, OJ Ananobi was a new acquisition for the Knicks, but because of that trade, they lost RJ Barrett yep. and they lost Emmanuel quickly. And now they don't have those players. So now that OJ's out there, they're really they're really a thin roster. You can see like the lack of like top end talent on yeah. that team without OJ. OG. OG. And yeah. then um for the Sixers, of course, MVP Joel Embiid, who's the MVP before he went down, um, no longer eligible, but I mean, they just—they're just, just devoid of top end talent yeah, at this point. And it's, yeah, you've seen the Knicks; they're, they're i don't, i can not uh, struggling. I can't see their last ten. Oh yes, I can. Three and seven in their last ten. Sixers yeah. three and seven in their last ten, and they're just having a rough go at things for the Sixers specifically. If we've had some bad matchups, we ran into the Bucks, into the Celtics, like a like good, good the Cavs twice, like good mm-hmm. basketball teams where you're just like. God, like, yeah. wish we could play, like, still playing, like he's worth a crumble cookie. We'll get into that, <laughs> um, but I wish we could really get some matchups like the Hornets and the Wizards and the Pistons, but they're just not in our schedule right now. Yeah. And well, uh, the Knicks got the Pistons, and they definitely yeah. won that game. I guess we can talk about Normally, that a little bit. Yeah, now is a good spot. For that, that was okay. So, as a Knicks fan myself, so I personally, I'm not the like the biggest basketball yeah. guy on the planet. I've said this multiple times, but I do follow basketball a decent amount, but. You know, I love the Knicks. Jesus Christ, that was the worst call I've ever seen. <laughs> that well, maybe not the worst call I've ever seen, but very bad. Yeah, like it was. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, during the Pistons Knicks game, I don't remember the exact score. Very very close game at the end there. It was one thirteen one eleven. One thirteen to one eleven. Who was leading? Knicks or Pistons? Oh, so that was the final score. I'll pull. Up. Yeah, so it was it was just a very close game right at the end, and there's a loose ball, kind of a loose ball. But um, <laughs> one of our Villanova guys, because apparently we're the Villanova Knicks. Um, I think it was like uh, Donovan Di, Di Vincenzo, yeah, um, Dante whatever Di Vincenzo. Dante Di Vincenzo, and he is, I guess, going for the loose ball. Even though the guy from the Pistons is like about to start dribbling it, and just throws his shoulder and his entire body into this dude, and body checks him out of bounds. No call. Also, I just want to say, this <laughs> it's the most like the Pistons just being so bad this year and everything. No, but they're through. not bad enough to be funny anymore. I know, but like for them to have such a rough season 
and then that to like they were in Madison Square Garden. Like it would have been a huge win. It would have just been at least something where you could be like, guys, like you know, we beat the Knicks in we Madison, beat the Square, Knicks Garden. In Madison like, Square Garden. Like it, it, we're happy with that. And then like like you said to just get body checked by Dante <laughs> yeah. DiVincenzo by some role player, yeah. get rocked, and then it's like, up oh, well. I guess the game's over now. Like it was, oh my God, it was so, cause that, that would have given uh Detroit possession. I believe they were either, it would either would have been tied at that time or it would have been, um, it would have been, they're in the bonus. It's free, free throws. Free, yeah. So it would have given them essentially, it would have given them an opportunity to get some more points and really have a good shot at winning that game. It was just, it was utterly ridiculous. Not as side note. I don't know if you guys saw during the, uh, I think it was Texas versus Texas tech game. Uh, basketball, uh, not as bad as that game where some dude, I swear to God, and I can send you the clip of this so you can actually put it in at the bottom. Literally borderline targeting in football. <laughs> like the crazy, the you, you was, know what I'm talking about? That, that thing was like, he lines this dude up and like crack back blocks him. Like doesn't even look at the ball and just like shoulder into the chest, throws this dude into the announcer's table and then turns to the ref and goes, what do you mean? I actually, I actually think it was Jalen Brunson who checked to Sarah Thompson. No, it was, it was Devin chance. Oh, okay. Cause, cause there was a, there was a bunch of like loose ball stuff before that oh, okay, okay. where it was like a lot going on. Then right at the end, it was Devin Chenzo just throws himself into the guy. What's really funny is on the on the play by play, they say a Sir Thompson lost ball turnover. That's what it was. That's exactly what it was. Because <laughs> it was like, like, oh, it just went off his hand. <laughs> DiVincenzo <laughs> just throws himself into him. <laughs> yeah, and then Josh Hart makes the free, yeah. free throws and the game's over. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Just a classic way for the Detroit Pistons to lose. And again, a game where at the end of the year we might be like, the Knicks won this game, and that's going to matter a lot for yeah, uh, for the standings. Exactly. Um, also, to the Texas player, the horns down. <laughs> you. That was horrible. Yeah. Um, he got too flagrant and immediately got kicked. But, as as know, he should. Makes as he should. But the fact that he had the audacity to look at the ref and go, what do you, oh, what do you what mean? Do you mean? What, did what did I do? Mean? It's like, dude, you would have gotten flagged in football for that. That's a yeah. crackback block. You can't do that <laughs> with pads on. Yep. Whatever. And most importantly, out of the Eastern Conference standings, I am happy and thrilled to report. If you saw last episode, you'll know. Oh, the Wizards and Pistons have the same record. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> same bro. record. Now, the Wizards have the tiebreaker. Yes. But we are an officially the Wizards are the worst team in the league. We watch. are oh, on boy. official Wizards slander podcast. I yep. can't believe they gave Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole a crap. Dude, because again, they're not bad enough to be funny so nobody knows how bad they are they're just bad they are arguably worse than the pistons who we memed for the entire first part of the year oh and even God. better the wizards have lost 12 straight games so like they're starting to they're approach creeping 20. up on it yeah now they have some they have some easy games coming up yeah. with the jazz and the hornets like they might be able to pick off a game and and try to break that losing streak but i don't know that starts creeping to 15 16 we're gonna be like uh oh, uh -oh. we're uh -oh. getting close to the record. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, but Could yeah. you imagine if we had two teams in the same season? Both they won't though. They if won't. if one team breaks the longest streak of losing, and then in the same season it's broken again by a <laughs> yeah. different team. Here's what I say: It is not impossible for the Wizards, I think, to tie the Sixers with ten wins for the season because the Sixers when they went ten and seventy two. Oh oh oh! I thought yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no bombing. you're good you're good um. Because they have nine wins now, so they need to win one more game. But they're really bad, and almost saying it would be like, okay, they need to lose like five, six more games straight, win a game, and then kind of just lose out the rest of the season mm -hmm. when teams are playing. A lot of teams are in play in contention, so they're going to be playing really hard. Yeah. So it's not out of the question for some of these teams to to go ten and seventy. So I think the Pistons are good enough that they'll end up uh, winning uh, winning a few games because yeah, they're three and seven in their last ten, which is Th yeah. they've yeah they they've been picking it up. That's yeah. good for Detroit. Yeah, yeah, they, it's great. God, they need it. Yeah, they, they could use anything right now. Um, but yeah, that's just an important note. And then going over to the Western Conference, um, the Matt the Warriors are eight and two in their last ten. Um, since benching Clay Thompson, they've been really good as well. <laughs> um, which is a it's crazy. Ass. <laughs> if you look at the Warriors roster, you you're just like you're wondering what era. We're in because yeah. like if you watch like if you just didn't get the date, you'd just be like, wait, hold on. Chris Paul and Clay yeah. Thompson are on the bench. Yeah. Rolling around with 
the Brandon, who's a rookie, I cannot pronounce his last yes. name. Jonathan Kaminga, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Wiggins was out for personal reasons, so I forget yeah. who else was starting in his uh, in his place. Um, yeah. But like a, a group of stars, we were just like, huh? Who? Yeah. And Clay Thompson and Chris, Chris Paul, Paul on the, the bench. bench? Hall, like, what are you Hall talking about? Players. Yeah, both uh, easily Hall of Fame players. Like, CP3 yeah. will never get a ring. Yeah. But they've been God. they've been really good. Eight That's and two. All. The Mavs seven and three in their last ten. Lakers seven and three in their last ten. And all I have to say is those three teams are all playing teams. They're not in the top six right now in the yeah. Western Conference, and they're both they're all the West is such a bloodbath. It's bath. loaded. It's, it's gonna like. I know the Warriors and the Lakers are kind of three and a half games out of that sixth spot right mm -hmm. now, so it's unlike that they're going to climb into that spot, though. But yeah. we're going to see a situation where these teams from seed five, ten in the Western Conference are separated by two or so games, and that's really good. Uh, there's not been much movement at the top. The Timberwolves and Thunder have the exact same record tied at the top. Mm -hmm. Nuggets third, two games back. This is an opportunity here where you can kind of put the Nuggets on their heels a little bit. You can't, and, and, and that's try, shocking. Yeah, I mean, the Clippers are only a game out, so can you get them in that four spot where they're going to have to be playing mm -hmm. road games after the first season? Yeah. First season series, and uh, if you're the Timberwolves and Thunder, you just kind of kind of hold on to that spot. Yeah, right you got to hold on for the dear life. The last thing you want to do is give Denver home court with the altitude. And, yeah. And they're, and they're so experienced. They, they, got a, they, they got a good fan base up there, too. They can get pretty loud. Yeah, so um, just something to keep, keep note of. The Pelicans just kind of hanging in there. Um, they've been like quite all year. Zion Williamson not had a great season, but he's kind of coming on late a little bit. So he's doing what? He's coming on late. But, um, <laughs> also, side note: <laughs> during the because the Knicks Pistons game happened uh, a couple days ago last night, <laughs> the Knicks played the, <laughs> the Pelicans, <laughs> and Josh Hart literally got punched <laughs> in the face by Zion. No call. <laughs> the Knicks are not getting a single call for the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> the league made a call. The league was like, don't you dare give them anything for the rest of the season. Because like Josh Hart looks at the ref, his mouth is like <laughs> bleeding and is like, why, why I, aren't you calling the refs? I, like, I, I didn't see it. I love when players are bleeding and they're looking at the ref like, look what happened. <laughs> like, I am bleeding. Yeah, it's like it was his mouth and nose were just bleeding because he got punched by a dude that's 6'8", 270 on a good day. It's like when LeBron had like scratch marks on his arm. No, it was, oh, no, it was Jokic one time. Jokic had, like, has scars. Yes, yeah, sc yeah, he, like scratches on his arm, and he's yeah. like, refs. Yeah, no, yeah, my, that's like, and then they eject him for that. It was so funny. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, my feelings got hurt. Get out. <laughs> Classic. Um, that's the standings. Things to look for for now. Um, I did want to talk about the Heat Pelicans fight. So oh my we're, God, please. We're we're in a local bar on Friday, <laughs> yeah. And um, I I had seen some tweet about it, but on the TV across is a is a video of Jimmy Butler <laughs> and uh, and G Marshall yeah. in a fight. And Peter looks at me, he's like, "What? Like, <laughs> yeah, what's going on? What's here? going on over here?" So uh, in, in the Heat Pelicans game, uh, Kevin Love, there's just some loose ball stuff. But anyway, Zion's under the basket, going up for a shot. Kevin Love kind of like grabs him from behind, kind of holds and like brings him to the ground a little bit to break his fall, what it look, looked like to me. Um, Kevin Love and Zion Williamson don't even fight, don't even talk to each other. Then on the side, Najee Marshall and Jimmy Butler just start like beeping at each other. Anyway, a whole it's entire just... like a whole entire fight is, uh, like, res like breaks out. Five players get suspended for a game, three of them for leaving the bench, two of them, Jimmy Butler and Najee Marshall for like engaging in like a fight. In, in a fight. <laughs> yeah. None of the players who were actually involved in the foul get suspended because yeah. none of them were involved in the fight. Exactly. And it was just a situation where I was like, was it really worth it? Yeah, because it was like, because there was like a foul happened and then one of the guys comes up, like kind of pushes Jimmy Butler a little bit. Jimmy Butler then For gets no in reason, because Jimmy no Butler... <laughs> And then, and then Jimmy Butler gets in his face. They start beefing, whatever. And like a fight breaks out. Whole thing happens. Everybody kind of goes to their sides. And then another fight breaks out. I know. Another one. Jaime Jaquez, uh, Jaime Jaquez, Jose Alvarado, and uh, uh, I'm going to forget the last name. Nikola Jovic. Yep. Nikola Jovic. Yeah. Uh, they all, all just start fighting. They all it's leave like, the bench. Why? They leave the bench. Well, it's like, the what? cardinal rule in fights is don't leave the bench. Don't leave you the bench. Suspended. You're going to get suspended, especially in the NBA. They, they're they cracked down And seriously, like, I know like you don't start thinking about standings like this far out always, but you really should. The Heat and Pelicans, like, they these, both need to win. These games matter. And, like, <laughs> by getting suspended, you're costing it. I know it didn't cost the Heat against the Kings, but that was really an opportunity where they could have lost that game because they didn't have Jimmy Butler for it. And it's like, guys, don't leave the bench. Please. Yeah, please, for the love of God. Um, and it really wasn't anything worth fighting about. It really wasn't. No. Like, there's times to fight. When Draymond Green kicks you in the nuts, you fight. <laughs> you fight. <laughs> but when Kevin Love kind of, like, softly, like, puts down Zion Williamson and... Uh, yeah, Zion also 
how are you flopping it when you're that big? I'm sorry. That's ridiculous. Yeah, imagine being a center and flopping also, it's all dangerous. the time. Like, you might dent like, the court. That's so sad. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> okay, yeah. Also, <laughs> Joel Embiid. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Zion, like, dude, it's Kevin Love. He's, like, 42. Like, this dude is, he's not 42, but, like, he also, looks like he is. <laughs> Zion and Kevin Love just, did, like, they didn't engage with each other they, at all. So, for everyone else fight around them, I was like, guys, like, the people are, Zion and Kevin Love yeah. aren't even mad. Yeah, because Zion, because, like, Kevin Love was, like, being a little bit physical. Zion threw himself to the ground, which is insanity that Zion's throwing himself to the ground. No one can move that, man. <laughs> and then he gets up and starts whining to the ref. Jimmy Butler and just some random guys start fighting. Zion's nowhere to be found in this because obviously he does he's because he's smart and he's not trying to get suspended. Yeah. And like then ha have his team get screwed over because of it. It's just like like you said, there's times to fight, there's times to stand up for your teammates. Why are we just starting random beef? This wasn't this well, wasn't there was one no of them. point. There was no purpose in this. Yep. I just thought it was a silly like little storyline in the NBA. But Side note, I hope they see each other in the playoffs and they fight again. Well, it'll be the NBA Finals. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, because the Pels are in the... Oh. That would so never far. happen. That would be the... No one would watch that. I, I would... The things I would... I'd be so upset if the Heat and Pelicans were in the final. I wouldn't watch it. <laughs> I'd watch it. I would not watch it, the games and boycott. Would you... Would you, you would still on bet on them, them, though. No. Yes, you would. Yeah, you would. I Shut don't up. even know how I would bet that. You no, you would. Okay, you would you, you would say you're not going to bet, and then DraftKings is going to give you like a plus five hundred for uh for like Zion to have a double double. Then you're like, well, maybe I could do that. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, Zion um, double double is not a bad shout though. Okay, oh Raj. my God, shut up. <laughs> um, next me. topic is uh, Sixers and Embiid and all their stuff that's going on with the Sixers right now. So first, I was in sports clips yesterday and. Uh, the first wow, take, you actually got a haircut? I Lucky did, you. but my hair looks like a wreck. I've been touching it all podcasts because like, I've worn this hat all day. And hat hair, yeah. I don't want to wear it front because there's a shadow over my face, but yeah. like, if I wear it backwards, I kind of look like a goon and my hair is sticking out. Um, but okay. Oh, there it is. The there hat is. hair. Yeah, hat hair. Okay. It's really not that bad. Yeah, it's, it's not that bad. It's going to marinate. It's going to look fine for Nashville. Oh, my my hair is fine. It's yeah. Just, my hat hair is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You're good. There we go. That anyway. Um, first take to this bit where they thought about should should the Sixers bench and bead for the entire season, and I think it's ludicrous that that that's a that's an option on the table. But I wanted to get your takes. Like, what do you think the Sixers should do with Embiid for the rest of the season? I mean, so where are they right now in the standings? Like, so I, that's what fifth? I need to. They're fi they're talk. currently fifth. Okay, they're they fifth are in the standings. Half a game up on Orlando, who's in seven, which is the play in spot. Orlando half a game up magic. on Indiana, who's there, Orlando and they would be guaranteed pretty much the eight seed because they're not going to go down six games. Okay, so if they, so how many wins are they at right now? Thirty three. Thirty three. Okay, and how many games are left? Twenty. They have fifty eight games played, so twenty four. So twenty four games left. Because <sighs> what I'm thinking, oh, God, you, you and just going to be back for like maybe the last like ten, not like even. ten. Because those are going to be such crucial games. Because like with how they've been playing recently, like it, they haven't been playing well without him. Just period. No, Tobias Harris sucks at basketball. And um, relegate him. And um, like the thing is, is like those last ten games that Embiid is like. Because obviously you have to guarantee that he is healthy. He's at a hundred percent. Because if you just send him in for one game and he gets hurt again, that's not going to be worth it. So. We have to be like 100. We who am I talking about with the Sixers? <laughs> I've been I've been around too many Phillies fans for the longest time. Like I, I've been like I I know way too much about Philly sports, but they realistically he needs to be 100 percent healthy and be fully ready to go for these last couple games. But if he's not going to be, I could I could see the reasoning because you can't just send him in and have him get hurt because at that point, like, what was the point in this? Mm -hmm, like, yeah. like what was the point in even having him play? Because yeah. like. You can't you can't let your superstar come in for one game, get hurt, then he's out for the playoffs. If you even make the playoffs, then you're bounced again, and then it's well, Embiid's not healthy. We're gonna blow the team up. Like yeah. that's just it, you can't have that happen. Yeah. Personally, we're, what they were saying on first take is like it is ludicrous to say that Embiid shouldn't return this season, even if he's like a little bit out of shape. You, I know, understand people are like you gotta protect your franchise player. The Sixers with Embiid are like. Or at least potentially a top it's three a team in the day East. Like, yeah. It's not. It's not like oh well, they're going to be the fifth best team in the East with Embiid. There's the only two teams that I would say definitively are better than the Sixers in the East with Embiid is Boston and Milwaukee. And Milwaukee's like is shaking. Maybe yeah, maybe they're better. Milwaukee's potential. So yeah. you can't tell me that the Cavs, Knicks, Heat are definitively better than them. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in the position where you're the third best team, 
in the Eastern Conference, yeah. you roll him out there because you have a chance to go to the finals if things break your way. Mm -hmm. They took Boston with a different roster, but they took Boston to seven last year yep. in the second round with Doc Rivers as the coach. <laughs> I think the team might be a little bit better now. So now Boston's better, but could you see this a world in which the Sixers could be the two like go to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Celtics and they'll lose, but they'll be in the Eastern Conference Finals? I could. And he's your MVP player. You don't know how many years, good years mm -hmm. he's gonna have left in him. You have to put him out there. You have like to. obviously yeah. if his knee is not healthy, you don't put him out there. But, but like even if, if he's he is healthy, shape, even yeah. if he's a little bit out of shape, play him. Yeah, there's a difference between being out of shape and not being like, healthy. Let him work back into it a little bit, but yeah. play him 20 minutes a game. Play him 24 yeah. minutes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Like, let yep. him play and get into shape. And uh, sure, sorry if you're like risking his future a little bit, but like right, there's no future. And he's getting old. Yeah, he's an injury prone player. Like you got to maximize the years you have of him right now. Mm -hmm. And this is a year where you have a chance in the Eastern Conference because I don't think the talent is really that deep. It's a lot board. weaker in the East this yep. year. Mm -hmm. and they could find themselves if they're like the seven seed or something. They could find themselves in a situation where they're playing the Cavs in the first round, and I'd really like mm -hmm. that for the Sixers. So, yeah, um, yeah, I don't, I just don't think that. Uh, also, I was going to comment Raj because people are giving him, him like Tobias Harris a lot of crap. If you are sitting here <laughs> upset with Tobias Harris. He, everyone has known that he's not been worth the contract for the last five years. <laughs> this oh, is not I know. news. I this know. Is, no, this is everyone. Everyone's no, like everybody's Tobias acting like now oh, it's a now bad thing. Bad, yeah. yeah, it's everyone, like, no, he's been bad. <laughs> Tobias Harris has been bad for five years and he's not been worth the contract. And I don't blame Tobias. He's been good for the Sixers. He's been a professional um, a great guy in the locker room. Every, all the teammates like him. I have no beef with Tobias Harris. But he is not as a lived, player. Yeah. yeah. He has not lived up to the contract since he got the contract. Yeah. People all this year, like, now that Embiid's out, they're like, well, he's not really pulling his weight. No, he's not. He hasn't, he hasn't pulled it for five years. Like, <laughs> Tobias Harris over me. Over me. Like, uh, just drives me insane uh, when Butler I see people. Butler wanted to stay with us. He did. Like, Jimmy Butler, Mr. Playoffs, <laughs> wanted to stay with the Sixers. <laughs> Jimmy Butler. <laughs> Dude, you know who you could have used in that game seven last year? Somebody that turns it on during the playoffs. You know who Jimmy used, Butler. You know who could have used in game six last year? A competent James Harden. I could have used a lot more than J J Jimmy Butler. I don't like Jimmy Butler. Um, <laughs> but not really. I don't really have much beef with Jimmy Butler. But um, <laughs> Really? After you just yeah. said <laughs> Jimmy Butler? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I hate the heat. That's really okay. Weird. There we go. Okay. So you don't hate the player. You just hate the team. Yep. There we go. All um, right. We got to the bottom of it. <laughs> Raj, what what are your thoughts on the Sixers? I, I I say Embiid should be on minute restriction when he's back, just so he's a little bit fresh. You can't just bench him the rest of the season. You got to maximize his use. I mean, it's night and day with our team. Embiid's on the court. We're very good. Mm -hmm. Embiid's on the court. We're kind of terrible. And also, eventually, uh, what year is Maxi into his contract? You got an extension. Yeah, you got an extension. Okay, okay. Maxie's so staying. Okay, okay. Maxie's no, I was just, I was just worried if you were, if he was coming up on a payday eventually. And, uh, oh, I think we already like, hit him. Yeah, and okay. like Buddy Heald, that's also a great missing piece. We definitely needed. Yeah, we needed a good shooting. Well, guard. yeah, but like he's on contract. And this yeah. is the whole thing. Like Tobias is gone after this year. Buddy Heald could be gone after this year. Yeah, just depending. Um, so the idea that like we're just gonna waste those two players, um, we can't do that. And we, we also we, got BBL Lowry. Come on, we yep. gotta win. Oh, Jesus. And Christ. again, just the waste the year. When the Sixers were a good basketball team until uh, Embiid got hurt, is just roll him out there, put him exactly. on minute restrictions. I know mm -hmm. you you might be risking you gotta do a something, but if, but if his knee checks out, if he's cleared by doctors, Whatever. put him out there. Yeah. Yep. Um. Now going into we're going to discuss NBA teams that we think have a ton of pressure on them mm -hmm. going into the playoffs, going into the end yep. of the season. We are just picking one team, um, and I will start just because we are talking yes. about them. I'm actually going to put the Miami Heat. On the list here and there's in the reason really? yes because the miami heat i people look at the roster and they say they're obviously they've never been really like high favorites to win the last couple of years and mm -hmm. they made it to the nba finals they made it to the bubble they made it to the eastern conference finals two years ago they made the finals last year mm -hmm. they've had like a lot of success success in that regard but the goal is to win an nba championship and continuing and, to make it and not and winning. so i think this idea that people Obviously, I'm not a big Miami Heat guy, so I understand I'm part of this, but <laughs> surely you're not biased. People keep doubting the Heat and they keep performing well. And then we're just kind of like, oh, it's okay because they overachieved. Because so like, you're, yeah, people yeah, are that. almost saying that the Heat every year are overachieving when we know fine, what they're going to do. But at yeah. some point, you actually have to achieve the thing, right? Yeah. And 
no, I don't think anyone thinks they're going to do it this year. But if not now, when? when? Yeah. Jimmy Butler is only getting older. Bam Adebayo is good. He's not a star. He's just solid. And those are your two best players. Yeah. And so... Beyond that, like, Tyler Hero's constantly getting hurt. Yeah. Jaime Jaquez has had a really good r- rookie season, but even then, do you think Jaime Jaquez... It's going to be the star of that team. Dan, yeah. Bam Adebayo are going to lead the team yeah. to the championship? I don't. And I, like, eventually at some point, you're going to have to redo the roster mm-hmm. because the team isn't good enough. Like, you felt... Like they kind of got lucky last year, uh, caught the Bucks in a weird situation. Mm-hmm. Um, the Boston Celtics almost came back down. On, yeah. back don't down. let us get one. Yeah, yeah. don't let us get one. Um, they, they almost blew it. It gets to the finals. The Denver Nuggets kind of controlled them in, in that series. And then even like we're kind of going back to the bubble the last time they were. The oh, bubble's kind yeah. of a long time ago now. But that was last time they were there. But so. last time they were there. And then they've had, again, they've had good Eastern Conference finals appearances, but, but still lost. So at some point... They've had a good last four year run. They've overachieved based on roster expectations. But now it's like you've got to actually go win. You've got to yeah. make it back. Like, let's show if you made the finals last year, you need to get back to the finals. Yeah. But no one actually thinks they're going to the finals. That's what's been frustrating yeah. me about the Heat is everyone was like, oh, last year was great. They overachieved. Mm-hmm. They come back with the same roster this year. And nobody's like they need to make it back to the finals. Well, but when yeah. are when, like when is this team yeah, going yeah, yeah. to have the talent to win? And when are we going to finally say that they have the talent or when, not, they're gonna have to blow it up when yeah. Dame goes to Miami. Well, because yeah. my whole thing, yeah, my whole thing is, is like if if you know your ceiling is losing in the NBA Finals, you need to do something to get yeah. yourself over the top. You got to get be able to get over that hump. Yep. Because like you can't just continue to be like, oh well, you know, we're overachieving this year. We made the finals, the Eastern Conference Finals, the finals again. And it's like you got to win the finals yep. at some I, point. I, I, I absolutely San Francisco 49ers. Yes. I no, I love that because you said the ceiling is losing in there. Because I always think, yeah, there's not a problem being uh, and especially in the NBA, it's a little bit different in football. Um, but being a good NBA team. And if things go right, you could potentially win the championship. It's kind of evident at this point that things will not go like if everything does go right for yeah. the Heat, they still won't win the finals, which means you need to change your roster. Yeah, you have to add something. And like the whole thing is like, oh, well, we, we were supposed to get Dame this year. Well, you did it. Yeah. You figure something and this, out. And this has happened routinely for years and years and years where they've been like, we're going to get this next guy. We're going to get this next guy. It was mm-hmm. Kevin Love who's going to add to the team a little bit. And um they're of course they got a great rookie this year but it's like oh dame's gonna come into town um and you're gonna jalen brunson was that a, yeah jalen brunson little bit. was rumored for a little um, yeah, like and things like all that. these players that would have helped them easily get over that hump and be one of those legit rosters out there with their amazing culture that yep. that they've developed and, and there. They, they lost kendrick nunn they lost max Struess. yeah uh, gabe vincent like players a lot of mattered. guys that were role players that kyle really, lowry yeah that really played up and beyond their like their role because of that great yep. culture but you need another superstar to really carry this team yeah and i think the pressure should be on them because they like again i know people are like this pressures on the celtics and the bucks and 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 such but they were the team that yeah. represented the eastern conference last year in the mm-hmm. finals yeah. that, that it was them so yeah. Them being like, oh, the Heat don't have a chance at the five seed. No, they they were the team last year. I feel like yeah. everyone's like, oh, the Sixers need to get out the second round. The mm-hmm. Heat need to prove that they're not like frauds and just yep. got lucky last year. Yeah, and so that's why I'm giving them pressure because they go into the playoffs this year and just kind of stink, mm-hmm. or first round exit or second round exit. It's kind of like, oh, like do we really think you were that legit last year? Like you kind of got lucky, mm-hmm. and then it's like, where do you go from the roster from here? Because Jimmy Butler's not going to get any better. Bam Bio has probably reached his peak. Tyler Hero is good, not great. But Jaime Hawkins is a kind of older rookie a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's why I'm picking the Heat. Okay. My team is the Bucks. Okay. With Dame, Giannis, Chris Middleton, and all those stars you have on that team, on paper, that roster should be unbeatable. Something's going wrong with that team right now. Surely, Doc Rivers <laughs> will solve the issue. Surely. Doc <laughs> See Rivers. See last is, week's episode. <laughs> yeah. Doc Rivers is definitely the solution, but no, they have a lot riding on them this play, coming this playoffs. I mean, you you think you get the missing piece with Dame? You have Giannis, who is still playing out of his mind. Yeah, still very good at basketball. Uh, how do you say Giannis's brother's name? Uh, Thanesius, I think. Yeah, Thanesius. Yeah. Yeah, you got Thanesius on the team. He's great. I'm not realizing I never He's, said it out loud before. Yeah. Thanesius is not good at basketball, yeah. but <laughs> I love some memes about him. I know. He's it's so, so funny. funny. I love it. Um, I think who was Adrian Griffin? Was that the yeah. coach? Yeah, 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 yeah. Memes were like Adrian Griffin was threatening to cut. Uh, yeah, to he, threaten to cut him, and then <laughs> Giannis was like, "I'll go to New York <laughs> if you trade my brother." <laughs> it's just funny, but the Bucks have so much riding on them this coming this playoffs. I mean, 
you have Dame for a while still and everything, but with all these pieces, it just is like you, you got to figure it yeah. out. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous that they haven't figured it out at this I, point. I heard a really good take from someone. I forget who it was, but this off season, Giannis signed a huge deal with the Bucks. Yeah, and, monster contract. And and you kind of felt like okay, that ended the does he want to leave conversations? God, I really but it's like, I wanted him in New York so bad, man. But it's like like every other star at the rookie free agent, um, whatever. It's kind of becomes soon. Oh, if the Bucks can't get the coaching, like I, we discussed this last week, if the Bucks fire Doc Rivers after this year, yeah, it's going to be now be the two shortest head coaching stints ever of all time in the history of the league, and Adrian Griffin and Doc yeah. Rivers, and Doc Rivers I think would have lasted shorter than Adrian Griffin, oh, mm-hmm. most definitely. If that happens, and you've got Giannis who wants to win championships, who's experienced winning a championship, Stoop might hold out, and now he's just going to be like, I need to get out of here. I can because see him holding out, the, I can like see him. Yeah. Chris Chris Middleton kind of feels like he's kind of hit his peak and down a little bit. Dame's not playing that well. It's like, oh boy, do we have a situation on our hands where Giannis wants to leave? Giannis, for the love of all that's holy, come to the New York Knicks and save us, please, and, for the love of Christ. And this was Giannis wasn't happy when Jason Kidd got fired. Yeah, he was. I didn't really seem like he was that happy when Bud got fired. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then he kind of ha- helped handpick Adrian Griffin. Is is Giannis disgruntled? GM, I think he is. GM Giannis. GM Giannis. <laughs> um, and I'm, I know he's happy in Milwaukee and he wants to stay. I don't think like at the end of this year he would consider leaving, but it's like how many more step backs do the Bucks need to take? I mean, they got the they have the one, first or second best player in the world right now, and they're going through this coaching disaster mm-hmm. every single year. Well, not every single year, but a lot recently. For recently, yeah. And so it's a good take that like, Part of the reason there's a lot of pressure on the Bucks as an organization, yeah, it's it's their less star, on the yeah their star player, yeah, could leave because you can't get the coach right, yeah, and like that. <laughs> Please come to New York. <laughs> I'm begging you. Oh my lord! The price for the Pacers Pelicans games. I want you to take a guess. What Three dollars lowest price higher. Five. Very close. It was six. It was three. Six dollars. It was three dollars earlier today. Jesus Christ! Oh, so it went up. Yeah. Wow. Holy <laughs> I, I don't know why I was looking Sorry. Earlier, Side note. But um, I, was like, anyone, I was about to text like, anyone want to go to the Pacers Pelicans game? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Rid- ridiculously low ticket prices aside. Um, yeah. Because the, it's really weird just seeing a team that has, you know, a finals MVP, like an MVP, a finals MVP, one of the best, like probably would be the best shooter of our generation if Steph Curry didn't exist. Mm-hmm. And a really solid, like defensive, like both both sides, two way player and Chris Middleton, and like a solid like amount of like role players that can like keep the team up, keep pace, mm-hmm. and they just like don't like they can't figure it out. Yep, and they yeah. traded Drew Holiday. Um, and this, it's just like it doesn't this, make sense this year, and it's like they made some big changes, getting Dame and getting rid of Drew for that, mm-hmm. and and whatnot. And again, they they might be in a good shape, but if it all fails, it's like. What was this for? Now Dame, I mean, not Dame. Now Giannis kind of goes, okay, the head coaching situation is a disaster. This organization doesn't know what they're doing. We lost Drew Holiday and we got Dame who might not even be better than Drew. And then you're like, crap. Like, I, what I am I doing here? here? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so just the thought. That's why I should come to a bigger market team. Um, <laughs> the biggest. <laughs> the, the biggest market team, please. Um, yeah, so for me, the team that I think has the most uh, pressure on them I think it's the Boston Celtics. I know it's stupid because they're the one seed. Obviously, the most pressure is on them. But like they've been a perenni- perennially just good for so long, and they just haven't been able to get over that hump. Obviously, they met up with the Warriors in the finals two years ago. Yeah, uh, two years ago. But like they lost to Steph Curry getting his Finals MVP. <laughs> he was playing out of his mind i got series. you today no nah, but wiggins does a yeah well. that was that was like that was warriors <laughs> culture through and through that was a tough tough series for the celtics because they were playing very well they just couldn't get there in a, in a weird way i feel like they're almost like the flip side of the heat they're like two sides of the same coin where it's like you know we have like their ceiling essentially at this at this point is losing in the finals that's what we've seen this current roster construction have um, but they haven't been able to make the finals as much as the Heat. Yeah, which is just strange because like they have Jason Tatum, this amazing nineteen-year-old rookie. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, Jason, it's just going to continue getting better. <laughs> it's only going to get better every year. But um, yeah, so Jason Tatum, obviously superstar, incredible. They added. Well, they got rid of Marcus Smart, which was you know 
tough for the team, but he was a really good like kind of part of that mm-hmm. roster. Um, then they add, didn't they add Holiday to their team? Yeah. yeah so Drew Holiday is, is yeah, Drew Holiday is better than Marcus Smart. So that was even though they they let kind of like one of their like glue guy roster guys go, you added somebody that that is better. Um, Porzingis is really coming into his own now um, as like kind of like a rim protector and a three point shooter. Um, but still can't believe the Knicks traded him away. Well, they, they he, still got guys like Derek White's really good. Like, they're yeah, starting yeah, lineup of Derek, like they have, Derek White, Jalen Brown, yeah, yeah. Drew Holiday, Porzingis, Al Horford. Al Horford's and, still on that. And they're they're rotating in around like Peyton Peyton, Peyton Pritchard, who's been yeah. there for a while. Like they have they have a really solid roster that's well rounded. Like they can play offense, they can play defense, they can like they can. They could do everything. It's the, that's just the weird thing. Is like they could do everything, but is anybody confident that they're going to win the finals this year? No. Like, are you confident they're going to win the finals this year? Do you have money on them? Probably does. I would say if I'm picking an NBA champion right now, I would pick the Celtics. I don't think they're going to do it. Anybody? That, that, no, that's a fair take. Because anybody that comes out of the West is going to be so much more battle tested, and it's like if they obviously if they're. But healthy, I almost think that might be a bad thing, right? Like you beat up on each other all these games. But then and... that's my thing is that like when they get to the finals, they don't have like that scrappy like we're going to win by any means necessary kind of yeah. vibe. Because like you know whoever gets out of the West, they yeah they might be more beat up, but they're so used to getting beat up when you get yeah. Somebody, like, also, also for the Celtics, and this will be a playoff conversation. It's going to matter a lot more about matchups for them. Yeah, they don't they don't really run a traditional big, so if they kind of run into a situation where they end up having to play play a, a oh crap, there's not really a lot of traditional. Bi- well, Jokic like is a yeah. great example. Like yeah. they're going to have a really tough time in a matchup with the Celtics and Nuggets, which I think is going to be the finals. And yeah, they're or gonna even to- if they run it, if they would would they run into Milwaukee somehow? Celtics, yeah. Easily could. I mean, yeah, yeah. Eastern, so like, Co- Eastern Conference Finals. You know, if you run into, if you run into Giannis, like if you run into these guys, where it's like they have like everything that you would want on a team, just without like that one piece that like that mm-hmm. kind of true big. But you know, obviously they've been able to play perfectly fine mm-hmm. without that true. Big. I I actually think the Sixers team this year could give the Celtics a little bit of pause if they if they're healthy, just because because um, of how it be. They ma- they match up a little bit better. Of course, I know Al Horford's like dominated and mm-hmm. but Al Horford keeps getting older. They don't really have that other center now, so Porzingis feels a little bit too small. I know he's gotten bigger, but he feels he's, a little bit yeah, too small. I, that's because Porzingis is like he's kind of like that like prototypical like almost Kevin Durant thing. He's not Kevin Durant. I'm saying just like size. You compared to Chris Porzingis, Porzingis is the next Kevin, Kevin Durant. Durant. No, um, oh, we're gonna get so much hate. Um, <laughs> No, but I'm saying like that kind of like very tall, very skinny, much more of like he can like play kind of perimeter defense. He's not just like that true like sit in the middle, big ass yeah. in the middle that can like get the rebound and take. box people out. Yeah, shocker. I know, right? <laughs> uh, Tingus Pingus isn't that. <laughs> it needs to eat a sandwich. Um, but yeah, it's I just I, they need the, the Celtics need to figure it out. No, I, I do agree that yeah. this team is if it's kind of like the heat in my opinion, but Next year, you clearly know the direction for the Celtics. Okay, we're just going to make some t- tweaks again. We're going to be the f- one seed. We'll get back. We still have the potential. I think it's very obvious the Celtics have the potential to win the NBA Finals, whereas the Heat probably don't. Um, but it is like, well, if not when, they lead the Eastern Conference by yeah. nearly eight games. No one's challenging their spot right now. No. Kind of feels like everyone else is in disarray. The Sixers are injured. The Knicks are injured. The Heat might not have enough talent. Um, the Bucks, we just went over. The Bucks, yeah, we went over them. The Cavs are young; they don't beat teams over five hundred. All the all these types of. Things. Oh yeah, the Cavs. I forgot um, about them. <laughs> and you you kind of go over all this stuff with with that, and you go, well, the Celtics should clearly get out of the East. And it's like, well, so if you don't get out of the East, then what's going on here? Can you have it? There was talks about breaking up the Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum yeah. combination. Mm-hmm. Well. Is that something that you have to do now? Like you're almost mm-hmm. forced to. If yeah. and Jalen Brown is the richest deal in NBA history, so how do you really trade that away? No um, left hand becomes very <laughs> becomes very tough. So I think that's a good. It's a, of course it's like the obvious one. But, it's obvious, but like it needs to be mm-hmm. said. Yeah, I will throw in one from the Western Conference because um, we didn't mention anybody from the West. Let me just pull up the standings here so I don't miss a team. Obviously. The Suns have a lot of pressure on them because yeah. they have oh, three superstars, but they're all under contract for next year, I believe. So it's kind of like you can run it back next year. Um, um, not a problem. I think it, for this year, it, a lot of it's going to be coming on the Los Angeles Clippers. Could be what? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> a lot of the pressure is going to be coming upon the uh, what? Huh? <laughs> no. Coming upon the Clippers. <laughs> 
can't take you guys seriously. <laughs> um, <gasps> I think the Clippers have a lot of pressure coming in the playoffs. Um, you got you obviously did James Harden trade. You got rid of a lot of that. Paul George is a free agent. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard did sign an extension for a lot of money. Um, you're opening the new arena. This year kind of feels like the year you have to do it. I know James Harden's under contract for next year, but Paul George will be a free agent. Mm-hmm. A team like the Sixers can throw max contract at him. Mm-hmm. So does Paul George stay? Um, probably if you lose in the first round and have a disappointing exit, he might not stay. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a lot of guys on payroll. You traded away players like Shea Al- Gilgis Alexander, who's now the seat above you in the in the Western Conference. And, and he's like what second in an MVP or something yeah, and like he's, that. He's absolutely fan, he's absolutely he's fantastic. Um, Still so going to make a three to hit my part. So I think for a team okay. like the Clippers, it's like, uh oh, if we don't win it this year. Our guys like is Kawhi Leonard going to get better every single year? Is Paul George going to get better every single year? Is James Harden going to get like? Yeah. Where's the improvement from the team? Yeah. Um. And you spent a lot of money on it, and you got a new arena opening. Just had new uniforms and like yep. the emblem come out. Yep. Also, just found out a Clipper is a ship. Didn't oh. know that. That's huh. why they're called the Clippers. Huh. Didn't didn't know that. The Gateway Clipper. Yeah. Didn't know that, but um. <laughs> but yeah, so I think the Clippers are a good team for that. Yeah. Um. They got a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. A lot of teams have a lot of pressure. I mean, there's a lot of stake always yeah, every true. year. I even think you could throw in the Nuggets as a team that has a lot of pressure on them because yeah. it's like kind of feel you feel like they could go repeat. Yeah. And, and, and whatnot. But mm-hmm. okay. We're at our a little over an hour and 10 minutes, but we're yeah. going to briefly go through Russell Wilson. And Bob, <laughs> our <little> NFL <laughs> our favorite here. NFL quarterback. Um, <laughs> we want to talk about where we think Russell Wilson should go. Okay. Um, should or will? Should. Should go. So okay. I'm going to start by saying. I think he should go back to the Broncos. He and should I know, just stay at the Broncos. And I know Sean Pay. I, and this is for where Russell should go for himself. This is where it would be the best fit for him. The Broncos have exactly what I think Russell Wilson is at this point, right? He can play for a year, mentor a new young quarterback, and let him sit for a year. And then eventually his dead cap will be gone. And then he could go try to play for a team on a small deal and maybe win something, right? So that's exactly what the Broncos offer. If he plays another year, his dead cap will be less. In the following years, you can cut him after this year. Mm-hmm. You could draft someone like JJ McCarthy, Bo Nix, um, Michael Penix, whoever you want, and sit him for a year, which is what I think what the best thing is for a young quarterback. Sit him for a year behind an experienced quarterback in Russ. Sean Payton, Russell Wilson can deal with it for another year. Mm-hmm. You weren't horrible with that combination last year. You can yeah. still maybe fight for the playoffs mm-hmm. and you can sit your quarterback for a year. The alternative is if you trade him, you're going to start a rookie quarterback or a quarterback that you don't really necessarily believe in. And when I look around situations in the league, the Patriots have been rumored, the Steelers. I'm like, no top caliber team, no Super Bowl contender in my eyes doesn't already have a quarterback. Yeah, mm-hmm. and is looking for a guy like Russell Wilson. So I'm just like, what are you gonna do? Why don't like, you just spend another year and make your contract more friendly for teams, and then mentor a young guy while you're at it? So yeah. I think Broncos are the best fit for him. I think the Broncos should use him because. I mean, you already got the dead cap. You're going to have to mm-hmm. trade away probably assets to get rid of him yeah. and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's what I think. The only other team besides that I could see if if the Bears end up... Because the, the issue is that, like, Russ is still good enough that he wouldn't just get, like... Because he needs, like, an actual contract. Yeah. Now, this one year specifically is interesting because of how um, Denver has a lot of dead cap and guaranteed money there. Um, and if they if Denver really just wants to get rid of Russell Wilson, I think a team that would be really good if I think I've said this before, but if the Bears end up drafting Caleb Williams, they trade Justin Fields, if they bring in Russell Wilson on a vet minimum, he's already getting paid from Denver. But is he willing to like play kind of like yeah, but you're, allow, you're saying that Denver would cut him outright, not trade him, cut him. That's outright. my thing. Mm-hmm. That's that's the whole thing. It's like the, if Denver is desperate enough just to literally just get rid of Russell Wilson by any means necessary. Yeah, that is an option is like for Russ is like, OK, well, if they're going to cut me, I'm going to go to the, then I think the rules aren't the rules that they're like Chicago then would have to pick up some of that cat like. I think they still they have to pick, pick up, up some of it. It's yeah. not all of it though, because it's because that money is guaranteed from yeah. Denver. But not Chicago's from also a Chicago. team where I feel like they should just be like get, get, spending all the money on free agents possible, which is which is valid. Yeah. yeah. So that that's my whole thing. It's like it's it's a possibility. I could I could definitely see uh, Chicago bringing in like a veteran quarterback. Russell Wilson would be a great veteran quarterback for Caleb Williams to yep. like to like uh, sit under for a little while. Although strangely, I don't know how good Russ is in a locker room. I don't I've had either. heard some very strange. He's things. weird. He's like weird. Very like odd rumblings throughout the years of how like he's kind of like 
He's kind of a drama queen a yeah, little he bit. He's the man. Not not like a like a oh we need to blow up the locker room cancer kind of thing. It's more of just like a Broncos country. Let's ride. He has like his forward. own like little personal team. He kind of keeps to himself a lot. Like doesn't really like fit in a whole lot with some people granted he's probably still a very good person not trying to say that he's not yeah, yeah but just like very odd things have come up a lot more often than you would expect from somebody like him who is like a very like he presents himself as a very you know very humble very like good yeah. guy which is so that's just like kind of weird so i could see how teams could kind of be like what's going on here yeah why, sure. why, why is this coming out but i would say bears could bring in a vet um just kind of spitballing Somebody who would be kind of sick that he could be on. The 49ers would be kind of cool, but they're not gonna they're not gonna <laughs> no. do that to Brock Purdy. He's not, better, than, he's not better than Brock Purdy. He's not better than Brock Purdy. I mean, granted, him and the Shanahan offense would be ridiculous, yeah. but yeah, he realistically he should just stay at Denver. Like mm-hmm. that's his best scenario at this point. Yeah. He's already he's already there. Raj, what about you? Where do you Raj's super serious response? Oh, so though I think Russ is gonna get relegated to the CFL and he's gonna join the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Okay. Can you or name another player on that team. No, but <laughs> I think the Dodgers are going to pick him up. Cam Newton. <laughs> Cam Newton's just going to be, be a goon now. He's just going to fist fight everybody. That was one of one v seven recently this past Breaking weekend. News, LA Dodgers signed Russell Wilson. Um, yeah, I just I don't know what other teams because there there really isn't like he can go no, back to the Yankees. He could. He was terrible. <laughs> um, but yet, realistically, if there is like I, I'm so confused why like all these other teams are like interested in Russell Wilson because it's like why like what the Steelers are somehow interested in Russell Wilson. Like, so, like, the Steelers are interested in anybody. So we can go through some of them, right? If you're the Steelers, is Russell Wilson the quarterback that's going to get you to beat to win a Super Bowl? To, that makes you better than the Ravens, the Bengals, or even the Browns. Maybe, maybe makes you better than the Browns. Maybe. Doesn't make you better than the Ravens or the Bengals for sure. Yeah, so and it's those like, are two what's teams the in your conference, and now you got the Chiefs and the Bills. Yeah, and, and but all then that the whole thing is just like, oh well, if you're just bringing in a vet, then like, why? Like, okay, yeah. I understand that, but just not make it, and make it run at Kirk Cousins at that point. But the, but the, well, the whole well, Kirk Cousins is probably going to get paid. That's the yeah, thing. yeah. But the the thing with Russ is that like he's not to the point where like obviously the beginning of his Denver career did not go well like at all. No. But towards the end, he started figuring it out. Yeah, like there was the, obviously there was the the one year he got the concussion right at the end uh, against the Chiefs. But like he, there have been flashes where he has shown he's a, still a good quarterback. Yeah, like still like when he's throwing like great passes to Cortland Sutton, like he, it's still in there. So he still, I think, demands like a better contract than just like a vet minimum for sure. So it's like a very odd situation where it's like, why am I going to be bringing in a vet? To sit behind my quarterback when we're going to be paying him like a starter. Mm-hmm. Yep, and so then it just like, doesn't make sense. Then like why? Then why so, am I having so this he, other person? He needs start? to be a starter, and then when you look at teams like the Patriots, you're like, all right, why but, would you go there? But like they're not good. Yeah. So are you just going to try to win games unnecessarily because you wanted to like get a? Because they're just tanking anyway. Either get a young guy and play him, or just get a vet, like get a, a really cheap guy and just kind yeah. of like tank for the year and for like for denver it's like why wouldn't you already have him on the roster you already have dead money why wouldn't you just keep the vet draft a quarterback as you said and then just let them sit under russell wilson like you could just even do mac jones again and just be like you'll ride out your last year here start yeah let the guy sit under you um for atlanta it's like it's cool like you need you're not gonna win the super bowl probably and then if you're not gonna win the super bowl He's a year quarterback. He's just a bridge quarterback to another guy. So it's like, why can't one guy just kind of sit behind Desmond Ritter or Taylor Heineke for yeah. a couple games? Because again, you're bringing in a bigger contract. That yep. It's not just like the vet minimum where it's like, it's not like you're bringing in like Chase Daniels and it's like, all right, you got to play like two games behind him and like kind of just watch. Yeah. So I think the Broncos make the most sense for him. It, yeah. it really like he shouldn't go anywhere. And that's what's confusing me. Why so many different teams are like, showing interest and the odds are changing as to like what's happening it's like why like it doesn't really yeah. make any sense <laughs> I, I don't think he pushes pushes any contender over the hump and i don't think he makes any bad team feel better about their cap situation yeah. so for the broncos they can make them him them feel a little bit better about their cap situation and help mentor a young guy because i think they will ultimately draft one of bonix or jj mccarthy and then yeah back to the seahawks you go <laughs> on that note that has been episode 24 of the coconut curry podcast we thank you all for listening new camera this time 
Yes. Um, I'm not sure if it's as good, but if you made yeah, it this far, you can let us know in the please. comment section down below. We will see you next time. I'm so glad Brian Johnson's gone. Giannis, can you gone. please come to the Knicks? <laughs>